No, that was one of the reasons why that motivated me at first to really start painting paintings for individuals to touch, particularly vision impaired and blind people, because I always had the notion that when I went to the museums early on as a, as a child, as a kid, in my adolescent years, I always wanted to touch the paintings. But there was no slap your hand, don't touch it, you'll destroy the art. So I decided that when I started painting that I would paint paintings that people could touch also. I discovered later that there were some sensory benefits from touch, not just seeing paintings, but also touching paintings. Well, there's a, there's, there's a mental, uh, kind of a mental stimulation that, that occurs uh, being a sighted person, I wouldn't understand what that is, but I've, I've discovered that in, in observing vision impaired and blind individuals touching my art, there's a joy that comes overwhelms them. That it just, it's amazing to see. Coming to your association and, and having the experience with your participants just kind of overwhelmed me to want to make sure that they experience that also. Not just to touch the art, but let's see if they can have the enjoyment of also creating paintings for themselves. There's no failure in art. Mm -hmm. You can't fail by painting the painting a certain way. You just shift. Mm -hmm. So if a person touches the paintings and it, it chips or something like that, that's just part of the process. Well, in 1970, when I first had the interest of art, uh, motivated by a close friend that I moved into the home with him and his mom, I was homeless. And he had a uh, natural inclination for art. He was doing creating pa oil pastels. So my, that piqued my interest and uh, I started playing around and discovered that I had some way of uh, creating uh, it, as fluid as he was and it kind of got me interested. And so in my studies in college, in humanities, I studied all the great artists and decided that I might try my hand and see if I could become a great artist. All of the Impressionist uh, artists of past and others, um, historically, Monet, Pollock, Picasso, all of them, and I'm just impressed with art as a whole. I enjoy working with oils, I enjoy working with acrylics. Also, more favorably, I, I, I prefer working with um, pellet knives versus brushes. Pellet knife, you're, you're a little more fluid, and you can also kind of um, build up paint and design, create different designs, whereas a brush, you, it's not really as accessible for you to move with the, with the movement of, of, of a pellet knife. My goal one day is to have art to talk. So my future um, motivation in all of this is I would like to see my paintings be able to talk to the vision impaired and blind. Uh, when they touch them, that it would give some sort of um, conversation back to them. Every human being on this planet, their rights should be recognized, whether they're blind, vision impaired, no matter what their disabilities are, they should be included in the, in the fabric of our society. As a whole, as I've discovered in my interaction with people who are visually impaired and blind, they are um, in some some fabrics of our society. They they feel invisible. They feel marginalized. That they're not included in a lot of things in terms of our culture, activities, and and as a particular as it relates to the arts and the humanities. And we need to have them involved in every fabric of our society where we can include visually impaired and blind individuals. We should be advocating as well as being motivated and passionate about their participation.